Welcome, Fight Fans, to Deep Waters, where we dive deep into the most important topics in the world of boxing. I'm George D. Metellus, alongside Chris Algieri and Hall of Fame trainer Teddy Atlas, joining us here on Pro Box TV. All right, so we're going to talk about one of the most exciting weight classes in all of boxing, 140 pounds, the super lightweights. Now, the news has just come out that Subiru Matias will be defending his IBF title in Puerto Rico against Liam Paro on June 15th. And so that fight sets up a big question here in terms of Subriel Matias. Chris, where does Matias rank in terms of 140 pounders? Because there are some super talented fighters in that weight class. I mean, regardless of where you rank him, he is the boogeyman of the division at yeah. this point. You know, it used to be Ruguru, right? It used to be Regis, Regis, Regis Progre, Progre yeah. but uh, Devin ha Devin Haney handled him. So now it seems like Matias is the guy that everyone's like, hey, man, that, that's the guy in the division. And listen, on, on, on a lot of uh, chat boards... And on social media and comments, people are always talking about Subaru and Matias. What's up with Matias? What's up with Matias? Mm -hmm. Whenever we talk about all these other guys. Because, the, listen, the other champions in the weight class are a lot more commercially known. You right. got you got Devin Haney. You've got Tiafima Lopez. Um, you know, you've got uh, Rolies Romero yeah. fighting this weekend against against Cruz. He's on these big cards. And you know, these guys have also headlined cards. Matias has yet to headline a card. So now he finally gets that opportunity. He gets to do it back at home in Puerto Rico. And he does it against a very un an undefeated guy who's been on a streak lately in, in Liam Paro. And he's also from Australia. So you get, you're getting a lot of different markets and different looks. So I think this is a great opportunity for Matias to be brought out to the world on the world stage to be his first main event um, and go out there and, and, and show why he is greatly considered the boogeyman of the division at 140. Yeah. Teddy, what do you make or where does uh, Subria Matias rank? in terms of all the great 140 pounders in the world of boxing right now. He's my favorite fighter in boxing right now. Ooh, nice. He's, okay. I mean, he I love him. There's a few guys that I love, you know, for a mixture of reasons, uh style being one of them, you know, uh, it helps if you're fan friendly, it helps if you're somebody that puts fennies in the seats, if you bring eyeballs to the television and he does all that. Uh this is a guy that is relentless. He's one direction. You know, he doesn't take time and waste any time introducing himself. He walks across the ring, he gets in your grill, and he stays in your grill. And it's up to you to get him the hell out of there. And if you can't get him the hell out of there, you got to have a problem. And, and he doesn't just do it in a way that, you know, is uh, any kind of amateur's way. Because when, when I... When I explain that kind of style to someone who hasn't seen him, they say, okay, he's just a guy, he's, he's coming at you in waves, you know, he never stops coming, he's coming at you with wide punches, because that's what you would envision at first pop. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he's just walking through everything, he keeps his hands up tight, you can catch him, no doubt about it, he's coming in the front door, but he comes in behind the jab, and when he gets inside, he is a miniature version of Joe Lewis. With the short punch, Joe Lewis was one of the greatest finishers, not just in the heavyweight division, in boxing of all time. And one of the reasons was because he threw such concise, short, beautiful punches. Matias does that. He throws beautiful, short, and nothing's got fat. He don't have to go to the butcher like a lot of these fighters do and get some fat cut off. No, he is lean and mean. His punches are coming at you. There, there's very little space in between them. And they don't stop coming. And he mixes them up. He's got a nice repertoire. You know, and he knows when to throw the right punch. Chris would appreciate that. You know, he knows the right time to all of a sudden switch to an uppercut when he feels the guy's starting to lean a little bit. The right time to go to the body because the guy's using his legs a little bit. And he wants to take those legs away. He, he's just a dynamo. He is a fun guy to watch. I'm always going to be in his corner. I'm always going to be rooting for him. He's good for boxing. Chris just touched on it before with the internet and everybody talking about him. This is a guy that was not highly promoted. This is a guy that did not have a lot of visibility out there. Yet the fight fans are starting to salivate over him. Because once you see this guy, you fall in love with him. And to your point, Teddy, 100% knockout record. When it comes to Subriel Matias and his last five fights, not knockouts or TKOs, 
They've retired. His opponents have been retired. Have retired. And George, so he now got the, the one guy, the one guy that he lost the decision yes. to. I've he fought him. him again, and he knocked him out. Yeah. yeah. So, so realistically, he's knocked out everyone who's been in the ring with him as a pro. Uh, it, it, exactly right. Subrio Matias is, as as Chris mentioned, what is it, the boogeyman, the boogeyman. of the division? All right, let's take a look at some of the the other champions and the other fighters. A one forty. You had something to say, Teddy? Go ahead. Did you want to no, say something no. real quick? I mean, the the other guys, you're going to touch on it anyway. I'm not saying they're not more polished. You know, Haney's more polished, obviously. Uh, Romero, he he doesn't. He's not a guy that can get you for endorsement yet because he hasn't passed the test yet. You know, he got knocked out by Tank Davis. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Uh, Tank Davis, I think, is, you know, one of the best fighters of all pound for pound in the world. Not just best punches, one of the best all around fighters. He can fight inside, fight outside. Mm -hmm. He can set traps. He's patient going after you. He's not reckless. He's defensively responsible. I mean, the guy is a complete fighter with a cerebral edge to him uh, when he's in that ring. So I, he's not, like I said, he's not, Matias is not the top of the list as far as polish. But as far as determination, as far as pure will, as far as wanting to watch a guy and, and attracting fans, he probably is at the top of the list. Haney is more polished. Uh, Tifa Lopez. Romero. Yeah, Romero is a guy that, he, again, he, he hasn't passed the test yet. When he got tested against Davis, okay, same as Ryan Garcia. He gets knocked out. All right, so you can't go crazy over that. Uh, but then he fights Barbosa. And he's behind in that fight with Barbosa. And what happens? Look at the way he's going to walk right into a counterpunch here because Tank is so good at setting up traps. He'll just take a little step back. He'll make you reach in a little bit. He'll make you feel a little overconfident. And as soon as you reach in, bang! Good night. But, and that's, again, Tank might move up to 140. He'll, he'll fit right into that slide if he does that. If his size can allow him to do that. Haney's the most polished guy out of them all. Uh, Romero, again, he he was losing, I thought, to to Barbosa. And Weeks stepped in. Uh, Tony Weeks stepped in, which he's been making a habit of recently, unfortunately. Stepping in and stopping fights in a very con- controversial way. So that's that's a little bit of a blimp on his radar right there. Uh, stain on him. And then, of course, you got Teofimo Lopez, hot and cold. Yeah, you don't know. I, I and I, I throw it to Chris because Chris, I'll be honest with you. After he beat Teofimo, uh, uh, after after he beat um Taylor. Lomachenko, I should say. Oh, Lomachenko, yeah. yeah. Everybody's high on him. You can't help but be high on him. He beat he beat a great fighter, two time Olympic gold medalist. You know, a guy that's won three different weight classes in the pros, won the title after three fights, two, three fights. So he fought, he beat a great fighter. But after that, it's been up and down like a roller coaster. I mean, you start to ask yourself a question, and I'm curious what you where you come out on this. You start to say, okay, is he that guy who only gets up for certain guys that he thinks that he respects, that he thinks there's a fear level, a danger level, you know, an urgency level, and he gets up for, or does he fight down to his competition? Or, and here's the tough one, is he not as good as we thought he was? I mean, I think it's bad. You, 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 You start to wonder a little bit the way that he has struggled in some of these fights. Teddy Atlas posing a very good question about Teofimo Lopez. Chris, what is your answer to that question? So I think it's actually a combination of things. I mean, one, is Teofimo that good? I do believe he is. Yes, I do believe he's he's phenomenal. Because if you look at him in terms of his power, his technique, um, his ability to dig deep, um, you know, his gas tank, all, everything. He, I mean, he really does have it all. His athleticism, his explosiveness, he's got all of that. He's got all the all the talent, all the genetic makeup that is necessary to be a great fighter. And I end... Just to your, your point, Teddy, when you back him into a corner, he performs his best. When he, yeah. The higher the level of the competition, the, the higher uh, uh, boxing IQ that he brings to the table. He's a very, very smart fighter when he feels that he is threatened. But he has a tendency to fight down to, to the level of his opposition. Also, though, he, unlike a lot of champions today, does not pick and choose his opponents. Mm. He's willing to fight everybody. He's willing to fight the awkward guy that people don't want to fight, the Sandor Martins of the world, the Jermaine Ortiz of the world. Jermaine Ortiz, Ortiz yeah. is really, really tough out. When, he, mm-hmm. when they decided to fight him, I was like, I mean, I think a lot of people would probably have not decided to fight that guy if they didn't have to. Um, but 
I think Tiafimo is one of those guys, as a matchmaker, he's a matchmaker's dream. He'll fight everybody. He doesn't yeah. care. He'll fight anybody. Yeah, listen, hey, I get, get, whatever. It's going to get me to the bigger fight, and when I get to the bigger fight, I'll be ready. Um, so, yes, definitely hot and cold, but I do think the talent is there. I do think the ability is there. You don't beat guys like Loman, Vasily Lomachenko or Josh Taylor when Josh was, was – Very impressive. Oh, Josh man, he was, he was something else back then. I was yeah. very high on Josh Taylor, and Tiafimo went out there and dismantled him. It, right. it was a phenomenal performance. I was actually there live uh, in the garden – I mean, incredible, incredible performance. When Tia Fimo is at his best, he is the best. Problem is, just like you said, Teddy, we don't know what version of that guy we're going to get. Prior to the Jermaine Ortiz fight, everybody, myself included, not everybody, I was one of those people, sc screaming from the Raptors, he's the best guy at 140. That's the guy to beat. I think he has the talent to beat everyone in the division. Not that he doesn't, but he gets tainted with that Jermaine Ortiz win. Or win. A lot of people th can, can argue that one, too. Um, but... Now, it, it, that actually elevated Devin Haney. But now, we've got Subaru Matias back mm. on, the, on the scene. So, I think we've got a lot of hashing out to do in the division. Once we get past Subaru Mart Matias versus Liam Parrow, because, hey, listen, that fight didn't happen yet. Yeah. This is why we fight the fights. Liam Parrow has been on a, on a real streak lately. Yeah, so, he might be a new member him. of the mix. But also, we got to look at Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. we got to see how those fights pan out to really decide who is the top dog in the division. But for me, right now, it's Devin Haney. I think that's the guy right now to beat. I think he's in the position uh, to, to, to helm the 140-pound division. Obviously, he's calling the shots. They always have. Um, but, man, Tiafimo Lopez, he's lying in wait. Because yeah. he, he is one <laughs> he is one big win away from going right back to where he was at Ooh. the top of the division. So, I think I, – Teddy, so I, I do believe he is that good. I really do. Yeah, no, um, Chris, I – listen, he's got all the neon talent. I agree with yeah. you 100%. He's got as much talent, if not more, to be quite frank, than most guys out there. He's explosive. Yeah, physical gifts he's are got the unbelievable. Quick, quick twitch muscle, you know, stuff going for him. Uh, not only explosive with his hands, the power in his hands, but with his legs. He can yep. close the gap, bang, close the gap for two, three-foot gap on you before you blink an eye and hit you with a left hook or a straight right hand and put you out. He has that kind of pure talent. He has technical gaps. I think that's fair to say from my perspective. Yes. He has technical gaps that have to be worked on him. And I'm not I think the psychological anybody, gaps are more of a, da of a danger. You, you got to wonder, is the father the guy to correct those technical gaps if they are technical gaps, which they've shown themselves really to be that in several fights now. Yeah, and Teddy, you bring up technical gaps. And I remember he used to have Joey Gamash in the corner with him and in training camp. And I'm, I'm friends with Joey. I spoke to him about Tiafima Lopez. He was he was very, very high on the kid. And he had him when he when he knocked out Richard Comey in two rounds, which yeah, was really 100%. impressive. Very, the very father, impressive. Guy, the father didn't want to keep him there, though. Unfortunately, mm. unfortunately. And I, I think that, that that may have hurt them. And I don't necessarily think that they need to get the father out. But I think bringing in some new life, some new eyes, I think is, is important. And I, I agree with you in terms of the technical stuff. And, and against a fighter like Devin Haney, Haney will expose those technical gaps and, and beat him, if that's the case, if that doesn't improve there. I, well, I right get the there's, there's a beautiful example a truck doing a tremendous job. He's reaching and he gets counted. Yep. Gets yep. counted on the side of the head and he gets dropped by a guy who's really not known as a puncher. And um, and again, beautiful example of what we're talking about. You can't be reaching in with guys, especially counter punches. You reach in, you leave a hole, and the hole's going to get filled. So tw I get the sense that 2024 could be the year where the 140 pound division maybe gets cleaned up a little bit for lack of a better term because of the fights we have coming up you have Haney and Garcia Romero and Cruz on that undercard of of Sue and Fundora we have to wait and see what happens with with uh, Teofimo Lopez as well so uh, uh which if everything kind of goes according to plan is the favorite who does Teofimo Lopez fight next Teddy who would you like to see him fight next if everything goes according to plan and obviously Tank Davis is in the mix as well <laughs> I kind of look. I blew my cover earlier. I I want to <laughs> see Maddie is with everyone. Yep. I'm I'm the I'm like the guy that likes maple syrup on top of everything. I want it on okay. pancakes. I want you put it on, on the waffles. sausage, Teddy. You you put the you put the syrup on the sausage. I want, <laughs> I want I want Maddie is on everything. You know. So um, I why do I like Maddie so much other than what I said about his style, his you know all that, but because of his character, because of of his will he tests people he tests people and you know what it's interesting to sit back and watch somebody not just with talent but to see if 
when they get tested, what do they have inside? Maddie's is the kind of guy that gets you to the place where you find out what somebody has inside of them. Not outside. You already know. You buy the, you look at the car, it's polished, it's everything, you kick the tires, it's beautiful. But then you got to pick up the hood and you got to see what the engine looks like. Well, he goes and picks up the hood when he fights somebody. You know, he, he, he finds out what is inside. And yeah, Teddy. I, I just find it extraordinarily interesting to watch a fight and watch a guy who might be more talented and to see whether or not sheer will mm. can defeat that talent. Mattias gives you a peek at that all the time. And, and what's great about it is there's a lot of people out in the world, in whatever vocation they are, whatever they're doing, they're not the most talented in the world. And sometimes they get a little discouraged. Well, I look at this guy, he's got the genetics. I look at this guy, you know, he, he's graduating Princeton and, and, and he's, he's got a four something, uh, you know, um, what, whatever that thing is. See, that shows you I didn't graduate Princeton. I don't even know what you call it. A, a four GPA. something uh, <laughs> GPA. There it is. A four some GPA. And you, and, and you say, and they start to lose hope. And they start to say, oh, gee, you know, I'll never be quite what they are. And then a guy like Mattias comes along and reminds you, what are you talking about? You're not going to be as good as them. It's not just about talent. It's not just about those God-given things that are beautiful. It's not just about genetics. It's about how much do you want it? How, what are you willing to do mm. to get it? How far are you willing to go? How much will you suffer to get there? It's about will. And, and I Teddy. just, I love the idea that he gives you, he gives hope to all the people out there, like me, who don't have as much talent as some of the other people, that you know what? If you want it enough, if you're determined enough, if you care enough, if you work hard enough, you can get it. Teddy, uh, two, two points. One, yeah, you might not have went to Princeton, but you got a PhD from the, the School of Hard Knocks, and that, that's go. good enough for us. Thank but also, you, to, your, to your point about, about Matias, I liken him to a pressure cooker. And he's going he's gonna to put that pressure on you. What does pressure make? Pressure either busts pipes, pipes or it makes diamonds. It's going to take a diamond to beat that guy. You're going to have to have a You're perfect right. night. You can't stand in front of him. You can't, you can't trade with him. And that's what I think that we're dealing with this division. we got guys like Teofimo Lopez. Yeah. We've got guys like Devin Haney. They're diamonds in, in, in the sport. It's good. They're going to have to put on a diamond performance in order to beat that guy. Uh, first question. Out of all the fighters at 140 that are not champions, you have Pitbull. We see uh, Teddy mentioned Tank moving up to 140 possibly. And Liam Paro, who's going to be taking on Subriyam Matias. Of all the non-champions at 140, who's most likely to become a champion or has that, that, that style that could be a champion? Well, 140 is historically been one of those divisions where it's kind of like a leaping uh, a frog leaping pad to go to 147 where the where the mm. more money's at but we've actually had some really good fighters at one at 140 we've got a lot of really good guys at 135 too so yeah. it, it's one of those divisions it's a bit of a revolving door but listen i have to pay tribute to our 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 comrade Paulie Manaji who's not here because i know exactly what he's going to say who deserves the next shot who could be a world champion ishmael barosha that okay. man that if he that does not get the winner of Cruz and Rollies, okay. this sport is completely off. Because what happened to him in that last fight, I actually just watched it again recently a few nights ago, when Rolly Romero defeated uh, Ishmael Barosho in that fight. <laughs> and that was one of the worst stoppages in, 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 I, can, I can remember in recent memory. Now, for him to get pushed to the wayside, and then he has to fight some tough guy from, from England, who he blows out in one round, mm -hmm. uh, O'Hara Davies, I think he deserves that step, that next step, 100%. Either way, if Cruz wins... Or, or Rollies, it should be Ishmael Barosho who gets that shot. He is deserving of it. He was there. It was within grass. The brass ring was there. He's 40 years old. The guy is... I was going to say, with his age, oh, yeah. He's been, he's, been, he's been reaching for that brass ring. He's fallen up short time and time again. That might have been his last chance, but honestly, he looked great in his last fight. I believe he needs to get that next shot. Now, can he do it? That's up to him. And yeah. that's, up, that's up to the man upstairs, but we'll see. All right, Teddy, of all the 140-pounders, we know you're a big Subriero Matias fan. We can understand with his, with his uh, knockout record. Which one of the non-champions at 140 do you think has what it takes to become a champion? Uh, I mean, I, I love Barossa, too. Uh, the only thing is, he's 40, he looks like he's going on 80, you know? And, <laughs> and, 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 not the way he punches, and, that's for no, one thing. No, not the way he punches, man's or the way he fights, or the way he counter-punches, or the way he's clever to set up things. But I think that... 
I don't know. Does that hurt him in the in the court of public opinion a little bit? And I'm being, you know, I'm not being facetious here. I'm not ever trying to make fun of a fighter. It certainly but, hurt um, him in the in the in the uh, know, opinion of the ref. You look at him and he, he, you say, "Wow, my God!" And then of course he he goes out and does his thing, and you say, "The guy can fight. That's all that matters. The the guy looks damn good." I think the point that we're both making is the clock is ticking. He's got to he's got to get if he's getting that opportunity, he's got to get it right away. Um, before too much time go. There, there's an undefeated fighter in Arnold Barbosa. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he fits in there with the talent of some of these guys, to be honest. But I think he's a solid guy. You know, he's about 29 and 0. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but I know he's in that neighborhood. Uh, he's got a, probably about 11 knockouts. So it showed you he's not an explosive. Like I said, he's not explosive in one area like the Teal Females and these other guys are. But he's a solid guy who's been fighting steady. And he would, you know, a guy like that can go and make a surprise showing of himself because he's been sneaking under the radar. You know, nobody's really got an eyeball on him. There's no X on his back. And when he gets in there, he's solid enough. He keeps his hands up pretty well. You can hit him, but he's defensively responsible enough. He goes to the body, he puts punches together well, uses his jab really well, he controls range pretty well. Um, he's a guy He's a guy that's worth at least respecting that he's going to get a shot at some point if, Teddy, if they I, don't make a mistake. I but, agree with you with, with, uh, um, with um, Barboza. Uh, Barboza, he's number me. one contender in WBO, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and he's, he's, he's been knocking at the door for a while. Let me, yeah. let me throw a name out there for you, Teddy. I want to ask your opinion. What do you think about um, J.C. Ramirez? He's a guy that, um, you know, he was top of the division for a while. You know, he obviously lost to Taylor in a very close fight. He was world champion for a long time. Um, he, I know he's on the comeback trail. I've been, I've been hearing mutterings of, of him coming back very, very soon. Um, and he's a guy, he, he used to be one of, one of the horsemen of this division. You know, do, do you think he's got what it takes to, to get back to the top? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's left in the tank, and you alluded to it. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as experience, as far as pedigree, as far as you know, haven't been there and haven't shown that he fits at that level, obviously. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a guy that I take another peek at. Um, I also would say, have we have we closed the door on Josh Taylor? You know, have have we closed and and if he fights Catterell, that does that guy does if Catterell wins the rematch, that's just, you know, take a little assumption here. I mean, obviously uh, Josh Taylor probably still be the favorite. He won the first one. Yeah. But if Catterall wins the rematch, Catterall deserves uh, some recognition up there too. He's a guy that I would I put him right up there in the in the top section. He's a terrific counter puncher. You know, he's an experienced guy. He's a wily guy. Uh, if he can if he can go, the, the big question about Josh Taylor is that I don't know if the word shop water is. Yeah, is appropriate, I was going to say, he, he's an old 33. He looks like he's slipped. Or, or 32, and he's very injury-prone lately. He, it's, it's hard for him to even get to the fight night, so that, that that's certainly an issue. We're yeah. talking about Barosho being old, um, you know, but, but, but being able to perform, Josh Taylor's the opposite. And don't forget, Isaac Pitbull Cruz, he could beat Rolly Romero and, he, and upset everything there at 140 as well. I mean, he's a very good fighter player. also. Another yeah, player. I mean, he says he wants to go back down to 135, but it's that's difficult to do when you yeah. have a title. Man, 140 pounds is, as they used to say, lit. Right? That, that's how I'm showing my age because I'm using terms from like 2010. Anyway, <laughs> Teddy Atlas, Young Chris Algieri, thank you, you very much about? for your time. I, I very just, quickly, go you ahead, just Teddy. You became 20 years younger to me using that term. <laughs> what are you talking about? Lit. Yeah. Hey, he's lit. That, well, I got lit. That's lit, baby. Wow. That does it for Deep Waters here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. <laughs>